So my almost five year relationship ended and I decided to book myself a solo trip to Prague. The decisions you make when you're emotionally unstable. Right. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm just, I'm freaking out. The fact that I'm actually doing this and it's happening tomorrow. Until so far, I've been dealing with it in a delusional way and trying to be like, you know, I'm going to Prague. I'm going to travel by myself for the first time. I know that a ton of people do this all the time. They go on backpack trips and whatever, but I've never done this all by myself post breakup. And I'm so curious to see how it will go. Yeah just packed my suitcase. It's not only my first time solo tripping, I'm also sleeping at a hostel for the first time. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a week filled with firsts, but after the fact that my life got kind of like thrown upside down, did a 360, I think it's good for myself to face some fears and challenge myself to do this. So I'm excited and scared and I wanna take you on this journey with me. So let's go to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm already very, I feel more relaxed now about my solo <laughs> trip because I was very scared of not really getting into contact with people, well, but may maybe, uh, we'll see each other. <laughs> maybe we'll see each other in Prague. Yes. We love meeting people in our trip. Every yeah. time we, we meet people yeah. and uh, it's very funny because everyone says that we have a good uh, vibe. We attract people. Yes. Yes. is amazing and I want to give you a big update on like how I'm finding it to travel alone and be solo but I want to sit down for that and give you a proper update <laughs> oh my gosh there's a huge peacock behind the camera now <laughs> oh my gosh um hello I never do this in public but oh, another peacock so many peacocks okay let's do an update here now that we're standing here Prague has been amazing until so far and I was so scared of of being here by myself uh, but like I told you post break of Sabine was like let's make some radical decisions and until so far it has been amazing I have met so many people within the last 24 hours and I've had so many amazing um, interactions with people on the plane and I got this really cool idea from someone on TikTok to get a notebook and then write down this question I of course wanted to be really fancy and make like hand lettering stuff so What's one piece of advice you wish you knew earlier or I was like, what if people like panic? I was like, just write something else or draw something. And until so far, I've had three responses from the people on my plane yesterday and also someone who I just met during lunch. I'm gonna ask more people to write this down. My hostel is fine, but like I barely slept because of noises and I'm just like a super light sleeper. And then this morning I did like a guru walk, walking tour of Prague, which I would recommend to anyone because it's basically like free and you can like pay the people how much you wanna pay them. And I already met some other people. I've just been constantly like meeting people and talking with them and then exploring Prague by myself as well, which has been really lovely. So I'm gonna go to the Prague castle, like the cathedral and go to the viewing point, enjoy this garden, freshen myself up at the hostel because I'm sweating everywhere and then 
have some dinner tonight by myself, I think. I'm not sure. But until so far, this solo travel experience, 10 out of fucking 10. You're on the video now too, Frank. That's a camera, putain. Yeah. Trop bien. A real camera I was like, she would have filmed with. No. <laughs> Shakespeare and Co. I mean, I've been to Shakespeare and Co. in Paris. Now I'm going to like the sister company in Prague. I don't know how you say that, but it's like right here. like my final full day and tomorrow I have to leave for the airport at 12 but I'm really tired right now as you can kind of see we got drinks at the bar yesterday so I'm gonna get some brunch for myself now and then explore Prague 7 I think I got an umbrella and yeah it's just it's, it's raining so much so I absolutely needed one. I almost accidentally stole it at the, at like the, what's it called? Like the drugstore? back for a couple of days and still reminiscing about this trip. <laughs> this was absolutely amazing. It's something that I would recommend to everyone, even when you're in a relationship. I know it's difficult to go on a solo trip when you're with your partner because you're like, ah, I want to do this with someone. But it's so amazing for your own self growth. And for me personally, like I was really afraid of like feeling extremely lonely and not being able to socialize and that was all completely like proven wrong. I had so much to do in the city. Prague is so beautiful. Like everyone until so far that I've like talked about about this trip, I'm like, this is Paris, but make it pretty. I'm so sorry if I offend people with this. <laughs> 
I've been to Paris as well this year, which I really enjoyed. The buildings are very beautiful, like the architecture is amazing, which is the same in Prague, but make it colorful. Plus there are way less people than in Paris. You feel much more safe. It is so pretty, like oh, the Charles Bridge and just like the view from the other bridges and especially when the sun was setting. And I've met so many amazing people. So I wanna give a big shout out to every one that I've talked to on this trip, everyone who talked to me, it really meant a lot. This trip has had such a positive impact on just my well-being. And now that I'm back, my well-being is going downhill again. <laughs> but of course, I went book shopping in Prague as well, as you saw, and I bought three books. And I should stop buying books because I have zero space on my shelves here and in my dorm. But still, I keep on doing it. Retail therapy, who is she? <laughs> okay, so let me put you down. Okay, it's still like a mess in my room. I have been meaning to clean it up for about a year. <laughs> so I bought three books. And at first I bought two nonfiction books at Shakespeare and Co. There were like so many books that I could like look at, but I, it was a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> but then I saw two books, one that came recently on my TBR and one that has been on my TBR for a while and are very fitting for the face in my life that I'm going through right now. One that I recently saw is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I saw this on TikTok and I just to say that TikTok can have some really good like recommendations as well. I hate it when people like immediately look down upon you when you say, oh yeah, I saw this book on TikTok. But basically it's about the four agreements that you should agree with in order to get some personal freedom. I don't know, it feels quite spiritual. I myself am not spiritual, but I do study psychology. So a lot of these things that I get out of this book are very psychological to me. The four agreements that are being described are be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. I am about a quarter of the way through. I haven't arrived yet at one of the four agreements, but it's, it's taken me a little while to sometimes like read the information in this book. And then I just want to like really understand it so I think about it a little while so I think that's exactly how I want to read this book like take it a little slowly get some life lessons out of it and I hope that this will be something that once I finished it I will go back to whenever I need to be reminded of the four agreements it has been published like 20 years ago almost so it has been out there in the world for a little while but when I saw on TikTok someone who asked someone else on the street like what's one book that everyone should read a couple of them were like the four agreements, the four agreements. And I never saw it anywhere in a bookstore except for Shakespeare and Co. Another nonfiction that I saw <laughs> is Conversations on Love by Natasha Loon and a ton of like other authors. And they write about love in different relationships as well. So we have like conversations on love about falling in love slowly, vulnerability, accepting change, which I could use right now. <laughs> Friendship, the loneliness of loss, Parenthood, the science of sex, the psychology of being alone, unrealistic expectations, and redefining romance, and many more. And I think that these are just topics that are really, really good to learn and read more about in your life. And maybe like, reevaluate some of your assumptions or some of your ways of thinking. It has that nice like new book smell. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I see this little bookmark in here as well, which I got from uh, Clotilde and Siham, the two girls that you saw earlier in my video, which were literally the highlight of my trip. Like you girls, you girls were the highlight of my trip. We also like accidentally bumped into each other like every day after we saw each other. And like Prague is, it, it's not a huge city, but it is a big city. And it felt like, it felt like meant to be. Like the universe was sending a sign to me. Like these girls need to be in your life. Can't wait to see you in Liège. Oh, this heart was so okay never mind I bought two books which were already too many for the amount of space that I have on my shelves and I was like I didn't buy a fiction book and it feels like I didn't buy any books because I didn't buy a fiction book so I went back to the Globe bookstore together with Tia who was also very very lovely Tia I hope that you're having the best time on the rest of your solo trip and I have been eyeing this book for quite a while and it is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I really quite liked Mexican Gothic. Like I didn't love it. I wasn't obsessed, but the premise of this one sounds so weird and I just, I need it in my life. And I wanna get more into like the October fall reading vibes. It is a little bit of a synopsis. I will get through it, so bear with me. Montserrat has always been overlooked. She is a talented sound editor, but she's left out of the boys club running the film industry in 90s Mexico City. She's all but invisible to her best friend, Tristan, a charming, or maybe I should say Tristan. 
I don't know. It has a little like, I'm gonna say Tristan for now. She's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan, a charming if faded soap opera star, even though she's been in love with him since childhood. And Tristan discovers his new neighbor is the cult horror director Abuel Urretia, Urreta? and the legendary author claims he has a way to change their lives. Years ago, he began work on the film of a lifetime, but the magic film was never finished, which is why Urrieta, oh, so sorry for butchering these names, swears his career vanished overnight. He is cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scenes and lift the curse. But as the three work together, Montserrat begins to notice a dark presence following her. The closer they come to unraveling the mystery of the film and the obscure occultist who once roamed Mexico City, the closer Montserrat and Tristan come to learning that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. And I think, but don't quote me on this, that this book has something to do with World War II and Nazis as well. But that's what I thought, which intrigued me because what? <laughs> so yeah, I, I wanna get into the Halloween reading vibes and just like the fall reading vibes as well. So hopefully that'll happen soon. <gasps> it feels so like sad to close off this video because it means so much to me, just like this whole trip in this period of my life. And I'm so glad that I got to take you all with me on this journey and that, that I got to like document it and Yes, I'm so happy and so sad at the same time because I don't want to go back to my normal life right now, but we, we must, we have to. Thank you guys so much for being here and spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel, which I would really love it if you did that by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. You can run, but you can't.